Today's video on eternal security is a simple one. This is one that many people already know, but it's so important and it really is the death knell in those who don't believe in eternal security. This is so crystal clear that I wanted to preach on this. And what I'm talking about is Matthew 7, starting at verse 21. And this is Jesus speaking at the judgment. And he says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And so there are a couple things in this passage that I want to note. Number one, and this is the main point of this video, again, a very simple thing, but Jesus says, I never knew you. And that's speaking to the lost, to the goats on his left hand. And basically, he never says, I used to know you and now I don't know you. You used to be saved, now you're not saved. It's that I never knew you. Jesus never knew the lost. The other part of Matthew 7 that I'd like to cover is verse 21, that very beginning passage which says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And at first that sounds workspace, like we have to do the will of the Father in order to enter heaven. And that's what those who preach against eternal security bring up. But in fact, if you go to John 6:40. The Bible tells us, in fact, Jesus speaking, tells us what the will of the Father is, and that's to believe the gospel. He says in John 6, 40, And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him will receive eternal life, will be raised at the last day, at the first resurrection. So that's just a point there that I want to bring out. But getting back to Jesus never knowing the, the lost, okay? This goes to the heart of that relationship, that covenant relationship which we have with the Lord through his shed blood of the new covenant when we are born again. You see, when we get saved, Jesus knows us and we know him and that's covered in John 17 John 17 3 says and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent so it all comes down to knowing you see Jesus knows us when we get saved he intimately knows us this isn't just speaking of knowing of our existence because everybody is known by God as far as existing. He knows that everyone exists. He knows everything about everybody, but he doesn't know them in an intimate way, in a personal way, in a saving way, the way that we know him in a father and child relationship. That's what ultimately it's talking about when Jesus says, I never knew you. Okay, so if Jesus knew you, at one point and you sinned too much or you turned away from him or whatever might have happened and now he doesn't know you all of a sudden? No, it doesn't say that he used to know you, but he says he never knew you. So those that he knows have eternal security. They can't ever be unknown by God. And the reason for this it also goes back to the election that we have as saints of God. Okay, see, we are, we're not Calvinist here. We don't believe that there's no will and no choice. But at the same time, we understand that God knows the end from the beginning. And so he has chosen us in him from the foundation of the earth. He knew us as saints in that capacity of deep personal knowledge of our salvation and of who we are as children of God. He knew that at the, at the foundation of the world. When he was creating the world before we, he ever made us, he already knew us. And that's what the Bible teaches. And we see that in Ephesians 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful 
in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you. It's all about grace and peace, which is reconciliation with God. From God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. See, we're already known of God in heaven. We're already there in the Spirit. According, in verse 4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So we see that God knew us, predestinated us, elected us, because he knew by his foreknowledge that we were going to receive the Lord Jesus as our Savior. And the the place that Calvinists mix this up is that this has to do with God's foreknowledge. God doesn't randomly pick people. It has to do with his foreknowledge. 1 Peter 2, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2 says, Elect according to the foreknowledge, that's to know. You see, that's that knowing that Jesus was talking about in Matthew 7. According to the foreknowledge, the knowing of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So we see that if God knows us, you see, if God knows us from the very beginning by his foreknowledge and chooses us and elects us and sanctifies us by the sprinkling of his blood, which atones, which cleanses, then he's not going to change his mind. Even if we change our mind, even if we sin too far, even if we go out and we live a grievous, sinful life and we live in the flesh according to the pleasures of this world, we'll be chastised for it. We'll be chastised heavily. We'll live a a miserable life. We'll lose eternal rewards. God might even kill us. He might take us home early. Now, that would be something majorly drastic. He wouldn't do that lightly. He's full of mercy and grace. He would give us tons and tons of chances. But ultimately, we can go out and live in the flesh and lose eternal rewards and be disciplined, but we cannot lose our salvation because God had already chosen us as those who would receive him. And he knew that by his foreknowledge and election of grace. And so it would make a mockery out of God if, you know, it would make a mockery out of his foreknowledge and his omnipotence and his power if we could then be saved and then walk away and not be saved anymore. Eternal security comes down to God knowing us and being known of God. And that's why he said, Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21 through 22, 23, depart from me, I never knew you.